Welcome to Firearms Friday from the Wyoming State Museum here in Cheyenne. I'm Evan Green. I'm the firearms historian for the museum. And today, for this video, I want to talk about the evolution. This will be part one of the evolution of Winchester lever action rifles. And we have an example of almost every one in the collection. So uh, hopefully this will be educational and informative. This is an 1860 Henry rifle. It was invented by a guy named Henry, and actually he developed the cartridge before he designed a firearm to use it. We're in the transition period here between muzzle-loading percussion firearms, breech-loading percussion firearms, and fire, repeating firearms that took a contained metallic cartridge, which this one does. This, uh, again, saw li very limited use in the Civil War. There were some state militias that were formed and the state or the generous donor who organized that regiment bought Henry rifles for them. But uh, with different rifles and different cartridge requirements, the Union saw fit not to actually buy any of these and issue them as an as a, uh, issue weapon. So anyway, the predecessor to this, which we do not have, was a firearm called the Volcanic. And it would look similar because it has an under lever and it has a magazine beneath the barrel. What was unique about the Volcanic is that the entire powder charge was contained in the base of the bullet. And that's pretty handy because you don't have to worry about extractors and ejectors <laughs> because nothing comes out except down the muzzle, but that very limited capacity for powder made it a very, very weak firearm. So the Henry built on the volcanic design, and it was an, an unusual methodology of loading. You'll note there's no loading gate in the side, but what you had to do was move this follower up to this point where this section of the barrel turned to lock that follower in place, and then you drop the cartridges down the magazine tube. That had a couple of disadvantages. One was that this entire area was open so that it allowed an entry point for dirt or gradu or whatever that could interfere with the functioning of the firearm. The other thing was something called the Henry Hop, because as you're shooting this and have it up on your shoulder and you're working the action and that follower comes down, it hangs up on your hand wherever you're holding it. So you've got to readjust your hand to let that follower continue to feed ammunition into the elevator and eventually into the chamber. I w <laughs> there are modern replicas made of this firearm this was a rimfire cartridge, and it had dual firing pins, so it struck that rim uh, on opposite sides. When the replicas were made, they were made for centerfire cartridges. And the danger there is you've got centerfire cartridges lined up in this tube. And if you drop the cartridge into that tube, or if you release this with an, release the follower with enough force, it can detonate the cartridges in that magazine tube. And I saw this happen at a cowboy action shooting match right here in Cheyenne many years ago. And fortunately, the guy was not badly injured. He bloodied up his support arm, but uh, was not seriously injured, but it severely damaged the firearm. And I don't know if he was ever able to get that magazine tube uh, replaced or, or, or fixed so that it would continue to function as a firearm. And there's a, there's a guy who has amazing videos online, I, I guess I'll, it's called uh, Forgotten Weapons, and he had the same experience with one of these Henry replicas in having cartridges detonate in the magazine tube. So the four firearms we're going to talk about the Henry, the model 1866, 
uh, and the model 1873 and the model 1876 are all what they called toggle actions. And it was not a very strong action because when the, when the lever was open, the bolt that, that locked the action in place was folded. So when you close the action, that bolt locked in this position to secure the uh, breech block. And again, not a very strong action. If that wears and doesn't lock things tight, uh, you can have a, a disaster on your hands. So the, again, the first four firearms we're going to look at are uh, the Toggle Action Series. So I'm going to reach for another gun here. You may have seen this one before if you watch the video on the Cheyenne to Deadwood stage line because this firearm, a Winchester model 1866 saddle ring carbine, was carried by one of the messengers. They called them messengers. They were in fact the shotgun guards uh, on the stagecoach to repel uh, in the early days both Native Americans who attacked the stages and later road agents who tried to <clears throat> hold up and rob the stagecoaches. Again, this is a toggle action and chambered in the same 44 Henry cartridge as the Henry rifle that we just looked at. This was very popular on the frontier. There's evidence that both the Henry rifle and the Winchester 1866 were used by Native Americans at the Battle of Little Bighorn. The 44 cartridges, Henry cartridges, that were fired in either the Henry or the 1866 Winchester are readily identifiable because they have those two firing pin marks on the rim of the cartridge. So, 1866, the first firearm to actually bear the Winchester name. Again, very popular on the frontier. The Native Americans called it the Yellow Boy because of the <clears throat> very attractive gunmetal frame and uh, bump plate. So, this is the next toggle bolt action rifle in the series. This is a model 1873 Winchester. And in the 1873 Winchester, the transition was made from the rimfire 44 Henry cartridge to a series of centerfire cartridges. The first one introduced was a 4440. It was, again, a 44 caliber, but significantly more powerful than the 44 Henry. These were, were often uh, very popular on the frontier in the 70s and 80s. This one is kind of unique because a lot of these in the rifles had an octagon barrel. This one has a round barrel, but it is still that same toggle action, so it's not, not a very strong action. The Winchester 73 has the uh, Unique fact about it, it's the only firearm I'm aware of that has a movie named after it, Winchester 73, which starred Jimmy Stewart back in the day. So, 1873 Winchester. This was available in carbine as well as rifle format, and uh, also in uh, a military dress with a full-length full length fore-end. So again, very popular, very popular rifle and was also available in other calibers. The, uh, initially it was 4440, then it was, uh, there was a 3840, 3220, a 32 caliber, and even some were made in 22 rimfire. So there's the 73 Winchester. This is an 1876 Winchester also called the Centennial Model, obviously because of the year of its introduction. And it was an attempt by Winchester to design and market a repeating firearm that was much more powerful than the earlier versions. The Henry, the 1866, and the 1873 were chambered in what realistically was a pistol cartridge. And in fact, the Colt Single Action Army was introduced in some of the same calibers as the 1873 Winchester, so you could carry one kind of ammunition for both your rifle and your handgun. So again, this was the last of the Toggle Action series of Winchesters. And it was chambered in 4575, 4560, 
allegedly fairly well documented that uh, the notorious uh, assassin Tom Horn carried a Winchester 1876 and 4560. There are also some pictures of Geronimo with one, and Teddy Roosevelt had uh, a rifle, an 1876 Winchester. So again, last of the toggle actions, and again as a reminder, not a very strong action. And this one in particular was limited in the cartridge overall length that could function through this firearm. So stay tuned for part two when we will talk about the next generation of Winchester lever actions. If you have any comments, put them below uh, or give me a call at the museum. They'll take a message and I'll get back to you. So thank you for watching.